Hello, this is Steve with Pro Tools PC, and I wanted to look at the new Sonox Oxford Dynamic EQ. So a Dynamic EQ, if you're not familiar, it's similar to a combination, I guess you could say, of a compressor and an EQ. Um, it's even more so similar to a multiband compressor. So it gives you the ability to go and just set regular EQ settings like you would with a regular compressor but then also gives you the ability to throw a compressor in there and have a compressor kick in on those certain bands at certain threshold settings. So to have a quick look at everything, um, similar to most other EQs, you can just click on the bands to turn them on. We have the technical on off switch here that matches the color. And then we also have our dynamic section that also matches the color of the band. And here, right beside it, we have a solo function for the band. So you can just solo that particular band you have selected. We can affect what part of the signal that the EQ is actually processing in. So in this case, I just have it set to affect the full stereo signal, but it can also affect just the left or right, and then it can also affect the mid or side. And then we have the very typical EQ function of being able to select uh, what shape we want it. So we can have it a shelf or we can just have it as a regular bell. We can adjust the frequency and we can adjust the Q or the width. And we also have the ability to change the width right here. On Windows, for instance, I just hold down the Alt key and then I can drag up or down or just use the scroll wheel to adjust the width. And then this gets into what makes the dynamic EQ unique. Um, our target setting here, which is this puck here, that is basically saying what our ultimate goal um, through all of our dynamic settings, at what level do we want that signal? So when the compression function kicks in, you can kind of think of this as like the brick wall that it's only gonna go this far and not pass it. The offset here, which is, I think kind of a little odd name for it. You can kind of think of this as it's just the actual gain in EQ setting. So if you wanted to use this exactly like a passive EQ, you could just use this function here and not use any dynamic settings and it's just like a regular EQ. And wherever you have this set, that's um, at which point the compression will start whenever the compression kicks in. So if this is our ultimate target level, is what they refer to it as, and my EQ gain setting is up here, it's gonna take a lot of compression, a lot of dynamic reduction to get it down to that point. And then to directly feed off of all of that, we have the dynamic section down here at the bottom. Most of this dynamics, threshold, attack, release, you can think of all this as functioning identical to a compressor. The dynamic section is, um, I guess, closely related to the ratio setting on a compressor. So if it's set at zero, so 0% 0 dynamics, which is kind of, a, I guess, a little strange way to phrase it, but, the compressor functions will not kick in at all. They will not do anything. Whereas if we set it to 100% dynamics, that is like the full maximum ability of what the compressor can do. So I don't know if that's supposed to simulate like a 100 to 1 ratio or something like that. And then over here we have our typical attack and release times. So over here on detect, we have peak and onsets. Um, we just think about peak as that's just how a normal compressor functions. It just takes everything that goes above a certain threshold and just wants to push it down. So for onsets, I had to actually use the tooltip here because I had never used that terminology before. I wasn't quite sure what it meant. So it's saying that it only reacts to sudden increases in signal level while ignoring the overall peak. So it looks like you would just use it for more fine control um, and maybe being a little bit more specific on what you want to grab, but it wouldn't be used as like an overall um, 
type of compressor that we're used to using. This is just looking for just specific transients, but not used like we would with a normal compressor. And here with trigger, we have above and below. This to me, um, I think it just makes the most sense to just say this is um, where the compression circuit reacts. Will it react when the signal goes above the threshold or when the signal goes below the threshold? So if it was set to below, you would be using it more like um, expansion rather than you would be using it for compression. Above would be the setting to just act like a normal compressor would. And then over here with threshold, uh, threshold is just like the threshold on a regular compressor. It's just um, the gain level at which the compressor kicks in and out of the circuit. So at what point is it actually doing something and at which point is it not compressing anything at all? The coolest thing I liked about the threshold on here as it actually shows you the signal level here beside the knob so it's really easy to, 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 to hit that threshold point that you want where you know if you just want it to react to just more of the peak, some of the subtle stuff or if you really want to squash it. So let's have a look at it. And then if we wanted to go to below right over here, it would do just the opposite. So as I stated earlier, this is just the normal gain level of the EQ. And at this point, the signal is below the threshold. So because the signal is below the threshold, it's basically going to kick in the compression. So if we just hit below, boom, it goes right here max to the target point that we want, you know, the maximum amount of compression we want, but it's gonna work backwards in that effect. So as we can see here, the threshold is still above the gain of the music. So let's bring it down. And as we close this off with the threshold, it's gonna start doing less and less. It's just the exact opposite. And if we kick it to above, so typically if you was using below, you would probably have your target, your target up here and not down. You would actually be trying to get more gain out of a certain frequency when it's, you know, at a lower volume. So we could see right there, um, it seemed like it was really affecting the resonance of the snare and it would actually bring up the resonance of the snare and make it louder. And then over here we have our dynamics control. Um, just think of the dynamics as the ratio setting on a compressor. So if it's set down here on zero, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna sit here, the signal's gonna pass through it and nothing is gonna happen. But as you turn up the dynamics, like you would with a ratio, and I'm not sure if dynamics at 100% is supposed to simulate, I say a 100 to one ratio, something like that. I'm not quite sure, but that is basically the idea of it. And then over here we have the attack and release, and they are just like the attack and release on a compressor. It's how quick, the circuit is going to kick in when it passes a certain threshold and then how long it will stay open after the signal passes or goes below the threshold should I say. And then over here we have a trim which is just the overall output level. And then over here we have a sidechain key input which is pretty cool. If you just turn it on it initially defaults at an internal sidechain and then you can turn it on an external to use the keyed input up here. And then here with, uh, again, like solo the band, this will actually just solo the band of the key. Yes. 
Then the other abilities of it are just like the EQ, except they are specific for the key. We can detect a certain part of the signal with the key. We can select a higher low pass along with the band. Uh, we can adjust our frequency here. Then we can adjust the Q width. So this was a quick overview of the new Oxford Dynamic EQ, just kind of giving you an idea of its controls, what it can do, the abilities it has. Um, overall, I really liked the plugin. I thought it had a lot of cool features. Obviously, there are still some things like with the onsets and that I need to experiment with. Um, you, you know, find the preferred uses for them, things like that but I can't wait to start using it in new sessions. Thank you for watching the video and feel free to contact us with any questions, comments, anything like that. Thank you.